In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make change in your head. And in fact, if you practice, you'll learn to make the correct change even faster than someone using a cash register. Let's get started. Let's talk about the necessary skills you'll need. There really aren't that many. You need a basic understanding of addition and subtraction. And you also need to be comfortable working with simple numbers, like numbers between 1 and 100. You also need a willingness to practice. And the good news is, every time you buy something and someone owes you change, you can practice doing this in your head. In all the examples that follow, we're going to calculate change in our heads using the same basic strategy. We're going to ask ourselves this question. How can I easily calculate the gap or difference between how much money I paid and how much money I owed? So for example, let's say I paid $1 for a bill that was 73 cents. In this situation, I need to ask myself, how big is the gap or the difference between how much money I paid and how much money I owed? Now, for a lot of people, it's difficult to just see in their mind the difference between $1 and 73 cents. So what I like to do is take this number, 73 cents, and round it up to a number that's easier for me to work with. So I'm going to round that up to 80 cents. It's very easy in my mind to see the difference between 80 cents and $1, and that's a difference of 20 cents. So the people owe me back as change at least 20 cents. But now I need to ask myself, how big is the difference between 73 cents and 80 cents? So that's another 7 cents that I need to account for. So in my mind, I now add up 20 cents and 7 cents and realize that the correct change that I'm owed is 27 cents. And of course, you can verify that with a calculator. Let's look at another simple example. Let's say I paid $1, but I only owed a bill of 38 cents. So in this situation, again, I'm going to ask myself, how big is the gap between how much money I paid and how much money I owed? And it's kind of tough to see in my mind the difference between $1 and 38 cents. So I'm going to take that number, 38 cents, and I'm going to round it up to something easier, like 40 cents. In my mind, I can easily see the difference between 40 cents and $1, and I can see that it's 60 cents. But now I need to ask myself, how big was the difference between 38 cents and 40 cents? And that's something that I can see pretty easily as well. It's just another two cents. So now in my head, I simply add up 60 cents and two cents, and I realize that the correct change that they owe me is 62 cents. And again, you can verify that with a calculator. Let's go through another example. Let's say I paid $1, but I only owed 23 cents. So I paid $1 on a 23 cent bill. So clearly I'm owed some change. And now I'm going to ask myself, how big is the gap or this difference here between how much money I paid and how much money I owed? Because it's kind of difficult to see the difference between $1 and 23 cents, I'm going to take 23 cents and I'm going to round it up to a number that's easier to work with, like 30 cents. And pretty easily in my head, I can see the difference between $1 and 30 cents. I can see that it's 70 cents. Now I just need to ask myself, how big was the difference between 23 cents and 30 cents? That's a pretty small difference. I can easily see in my mind that that's 7 cents. So now in my head, I just need to add up 70 cents and 7 cents. And then I realize that the amount of change that I'm owed is 77 cents. And you can verify that with a calculator. Any time the change that I am owed is less than $1, I use this same basic strategy. If I'm owed change more than $1, I just adjust the strategy a little bit. Let me show you a couple examples. So let's say I paid $5, but I owed just 79 cents. So I paid $5, but the bill was just 79 cents. Clearly, they owe me some change. And it might be kind of difficult to do that all together in one step in my mind. I'm going to take that 79 cents and I'm going to round it up to the next nearest dollar because in my mind it's very easy to see that the difference between $5 and $1 is $4. So I know they owe me at least $4. But now I need to ask myself how big is the difference or the gap between 79 cents and that $1 that I rounded up to. And this is where a little bit more advanced mathematics comes into play, being able to do it in your mind, just being comfortable with some basic numbers between 1 and 100. And I'm able to see relatively easily that the difference between $1 and 79 cents would be 21 cents. So in this case, I would add together in my head $4.21. 
to realize that the correct change that they owe me is $4.21. And you can verify that with a calculator. So I mentioned that it's important that you practice this. And as you get better dealing with basic numbers between 1 and 100, you'll be able to do even these more advanced problems in your head. Let's go through another example. Let's say I paid $5, but I owe just $2.36. So I'm going to have to ask myself that same basic question. How big is the gap between the amount of money that I paid and the amount of money that I owed? I'm going to take that $2.36 and just round it right up to the next nearest dollar, $3. And it's very easy for me to see that the difference between $5 and $3 is a difference of $2. So they owe me at least $2. Now I want to figure out how big is the difference between 36 cents and the next nearest dollar. So in this situation, I just do a little bit of calculation and I realize that that equals 64 cents. So now I can take those two numbers in my mind and add them up and I realize that they owe me $2.64. So I understand that this is a little bit more complicated than when we're owed change less than $1. But if you practice, you'll get good at it and you'll be able to calculate the change faster than the cashier is able to enter it into the register. Let's go through another example. Let's say I paid $20 and the bill was just $6.75. So in this situation, I'm clearly owed some change. I need to ask myself how big is the gap or the difference between these two values. I'm gonna take 6.75 and I'll round it right up to $7 because I can easily see in my mind the difference between $20 and $7 is $13. Now I just need to ask myself, how big is the difference between $6.75 and $7? Remember, I just rounded up to $7 initially, and that's a difference of 25 cents. So in my mind, I'm thinking about $13 and 25 cents. I add them up and I realize the change is $13.25. You can verify that with a calculator. Let's do one last example. Let's say I paid $20, but the bill was just $14.69. Because it's kind of difficult to work with $14.69, I'm just going to round it right up to $15. And in my head, I can easily see the difference between $15 and $20 is $5. Now I just need to ask myself, how big is the difference between $14.69 and $15? Well, the difference is simply going to be $0.31. Cents. So in this situation, I'm remembering $5. I'm thinking about $0.31. Cents. I add those together and I realize the correct change that I'm owed is 531. And you can verify that with a calculator. So I know making change can be difficult. I know it can be confusing and I know it requires practice. But the good news is you have plenty of time and you have plenty of opportunities to practice. So that soon, as long as you keep it up, as long as you keep practicing, you're going to become very good at calculating change. And the goal is to be able to do it before the cashier can put it into the register so that you know before they know how much change you should receive in return. Good luck.